how much does the war on terror cost? And what is the significance that this has in our life? Now you might be wondering, why the hell should I care? It's probably somewhere in a trillion dollars. Well, this is important because we have to know eventually, oh, this was a bad idea, maybe we shouldn't replicate it. Do we even have the money to give to Ukraine or some of these other countries? Should we ensue operations in approximately 85 different countries? Is it our responsibility to do this? If Flint, Michigan doesn't still have water, believe it or not, yeah, that's a thing, they still don't have water. There's a bunch of articles I wanna throw out your guys' way. I'm gonna to try to put as many on the screen as I can, but to be honest with you, that's a lot of editing and. I'm running out of time and I wanna produce more content for you guys and focus less on the aesthetic stuff. I digress. We need that money. So what exactly have we spent so far? We've spent $14 trillion on the war on terror. Do you feel any safer? This was operations in Iraq, Afghanistan, Pakistan, and other areas, specifically like a shadow war in Africa. We were already involved in Ukraine, fun fact, uh, before anybody even said anything about it, and I'm not spilling any leaked secrets. So for those of you who are mad at me for saying that, that's a thing that's been said. It's like a big open secret here. Okay, so here's something that you guys probably haven't thought of. Or maybe you have, in which case, I, I'm sorry if I made you feel like uh, I'm thinking that you're stupid. Unequivocally false. I think a lot of you guys are highly educated in this realm. My goal is to give you guys an update unless you haven't followed it in the last few months. The last figures I've seen in terms of interest, interest paid, because we have borrowed a lot of this money and we've borrowed it from countries like China, who's the number two. We've been paying off China where we were over a trillion dollars, now we're around $800 billion. Most of the debts are towards our European allies, etc. For example, well, in Japan, Japan's number one, it goes China, and then it's like Luxembourg, Norway, UK, etc., etc. Okay, the last stats that we have that I've been able to find, it was about $6.5 trillion we're going to have to pay in interest by about, let me see if I have the specific facts, it was about 2050 off the top of my head. So that's bad, and I guarantee you it's a lot higher now. $6.5 trillion is gonna take us generations to pay off. Do we feel any safer for that? I don't think so. I don't think you feel safer. I don't think you feel better about the geopolitical situations. I don't think you feel any better about what's going on in Ukraine. I don't think you feel any better about what's going on in China. I don't think you feel any better about what just happened in Afghanistan. The Taliban still took over. What is my point? People might be like, hey, you're pitter-pattering around the you know, around the, the bush like a virgin at a feminist meeting or something. What is my point? Guys, listen, there's a point in time where we have to look at ourselves in the mirror and think maybe we shouldn't be involved in all these different countries. Maybe we should reallocate all of those investments back into ourselves. Now, to give you really specific details, the last my, my little last point on this, when we're involved in 85 countries, a counter argument to this is that there's a lot of operations that are training individuals in counterterrorism. So it's like, we're not technically in there, but we're training. Do you wanna know what happened in Afghanistan? We accidentally trained the Taliban a lot of times. Okay, not to mention all the weapons we've left over. Do you think, do, do you think that any of those projects have been su successful? Here's a scary one. What data exists that proves the effectiveness of $14 trillion? It doesn't exist. I've spent years studying this, and I'm not talking about a bro science type of thing. That's why I'm in Paris. I've been studying this for a moment, and it's not a flex. I'm a nerd. I sit in libraries, and I talk to the policymakers in the U.S. and here, and I learn about what's been done. There's no data on this. That's the most expensive project that's never been pursued or understood. I met with the White House officials and uh, from Bush and Obama. I met generals and ambassadors and people in other countries, these NATO officials. Nobody knows the effectiveness of it. Most people just agree that it's not effective. And I'm going to do a whole like little spiel on that. But look, guys, at the end of the day, $14 trillion, $6.5 trillion in additional debt is going to be a lot higher after this. We don't feel any safer in Syria. Seems like there's still problems. Pakistan still problems. Afghanistan, Taliban took over. Iraq, there was ISIS that happened as a result of that. China's increasing. By the way, there's no military simulation where the U.S. has ever been able to beat China and Taiwan because we don't have the logistical capabilities of this, and yet we're still spending money, and yet our infrastructure is falling apart. Guys, please, for God's sake, if you support any of these wars, just remember, they have not worked out for us. They have not worked out for us. It has not gone well. 
So please, for God's sake, can we at least prioritize some of the American things? American interests. Do things for us. I think we can all agree on that. I don't give a shit if everybody says that it's such a politically volatile state out there. We should all be focused on ourselves.